Hi, everybody, and welcome today to Figma for EDU Presenting with Figma. I am your host, Mickey Cardona, and I'm also joined here with Lauren McCann, um, our marketing manager for EDU. Uh, so as you are joining, feel free to let us know where you are coming from in the chat. So make sure you set your webinar chat to everyone uh, and let us know where you're coming from. So look for the little chat down there. And I'm joining y'all from Rochester, New York. So I'm going to say Rochester, New York. It's so good to see you. We got Colombia. We got Tokyo in the house. We got Canada. We got India. We got Dallas. We got Morocco. Oh, man, I love seeing y'all from like all over. This never gets old. Every time we run these live streams, I just love to see where everyone is joining us. Um, so I am using captions down below. Uh, these are just Google slide captions just to make it a little bit easier for y'all to, to see what it is that I'm saying. All right. So today. As mentioned, we're going to be talking about presenting with Figma. I'm going to show you some shortcuts for navigating slides. I'm going to show you how to put together slides. We're going to be talking about gridding frames to be best suited for your presentations. I'm going to show you how to add images and GIFs. And also for those of you with education plans, I'm going to show you how to add video to your presentations. We're going to talk some of the constraints about video and, and how to add that in. Uh, we're also going to add in a little bit about scrolling content. So how to make content a bit more interactive in your slides. So if you're presenting um, prototypes or if you're presenting things in, in, in an interesting way, I'm going to show you how to kind of hack Figma to, to, to use those in that way. So hey, Portugal. Hey, Pakistan. How's it going? We got Spain, Ukraine in the house, Indonesia. Um, I love to see it. So continue to let us know where you're coming in from. Uh, just remember, you know, by joining this live stream, you know, that you're abiding by Figma's code of conduct. So if you go to figma.com, com slash co dash of dash conduct. Um, please be kind to one another. Please do not spam the uh, chat with LinkedIn requests. Let us know where you're coming from. Ask us your questions, but uh, uh, please, you know, refrain from, from sending links into the chat. Got Nigeria in the house. Wow. All right. UK, Thailand, Egypt. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. So fantastic group today. Um, we're going to get started in just a moment. I'm going to introduce myself. So uh, here, I'm going to take a new photo for today. I'm going to click on the photo booth widget. Let's just drop in. What's up? Okay, so this here is the uh, photo booth widget in Figma and in FigJam. If you want to find it, you can go up here to the inserts menu, go over to widgets, type in photo, and, and there's the photo booth widget. When you add it to your canvas, uh, as any widget in Figma or FigJam, anyone can use it to, to drop those in. All right, so my name is Miguel Cardona. I'm a designer advocate for education. Please refer to me as Miggy. Um, I can be reached at Miggy at Figma.com and on these socials as well. So at Miggy on Twitter. So if you have questions, if you want to follow up after the fact, this is how you can reach me. Uh, I'm most active on Twitter. So if you do have questions surrounding Figma, FigJam, or even you just want to say hi, let me know right on there. Uh, I just want to take the moment too to, to let you all know that Figma and FigJam is free for students and educators. This is a Figma for EDU live stream, so I just want you all to, to know that. There are a few steps you want to sign up for Figma. Uh, you're going to verify your education status. So to verify your education status, you head on over to figma.com slash education, and there's a verification button there. So once you're verified, you do still have one more step to complete. You can create an education team on your Figma account. So what that looks like, if I was to head on over to figma.com and I, and I check out my account over here, down here, you go to create new team. And uh, let's say I create a new team. I'm going to say EDU you team. Let's create it. I'm not going to add anybody just yet. And then right here, oh, I'm uh, not on. This is a this is a different screen. So uh, this right here, I'm going to upgrade to professional. They change the screen. You just want to make sure that you identify yourself as a uh, uh, education team, and then that'll give you the ability to add yourself. So you will only see that screen if you are verified as an educator, as a student. So as long as you're teaching a class, that's what's going to work. Also, we have a whole bunch of templates at figma.com slash at education for those just getting started, for educators, for students, 
students. Um, and we have a, a, a fun one for the holidays, a gingerbread house builder. So if you want to check that out as well. Um, so remember, you sign up, you get verified, and you, you set up your team. So your team can only be uh, had with other verified education users. So if you're a student working on a student project or a group project, you want to add your, your classmates, um, set up that education team, add your classmates. If you're a teacher, you can add your students to that education team. All right. So yes, everybody that has registered today, when you are registered, you will be sent a recording. It might take a week or two to send you the recording, uh, just so we can get that processed and ready. Okay, so we're going to talk about presenting in Figma. I'm going to jump right into it. So make sure that if you do have questions, you go ahead and you use that Q&A button down at the bottom. Uh, Lauren will be uh, adding those questions into a file for me, and I will be answering them either periodically or at the end of the session today. So check out that, that Q&A. So we'd love your questions, love to see it. And, you know, we're going to be talking about mostly Figma today and a little bit of Fig Jam. So the first thing that we're going to do, or here, let me just show you like an example, right? So this is Figma. This is the interface. Over here, I have pages. The pages are different levels of my canvas. Over here, I have layers. Layers are anything that are on my canvas sort of stacked up. And then over here is my design panel. So anything that I select on my canvas, I can see the properties for. I can see the colors. I can see the positioning, and I can see how I want to move them around, right? So what I want to walk you through is creating a presentation. So you may have used software before, like um, Google Slides for making a presentation. However, at Figma, we love to make our presentations directly in Figma using the graphics and the assets that we have here. So if I hit command option return on this page, what it's going to do is take it into prototype mode. And in prototype mode, it might take just a moment there. In prototype mode, I'm going to have the option to navigate through these slides as I would any slide deck. I know that we are having a little bit of a service disruption right now, so I'm going to see if that's going to play out. Um, I will navigate and show you how these are going to work through right here. I'm going to press the N key. And that's going to allow me to see the arrangement of my slide. So when I click on that first slide, I can hit the N key and I can start to see my slides as I'm navigating through them. So when I go here to my presentation deck, let's see if I can get this going. Sometimes presenting live, you know, these things happen. All right. I'm not going to stress that. I'm going to show you how this is going to work anyways. So once again, when you're navigating your slides, we have these shortcut keys that are going to give you the ability to see how those slides are put together. So right now, when I click on this first frame and I press the N key, I'm able to navigate over from slide to slide. So if I press Shift N, I can go from the start and I press the N key and I can move over to the next slide. So I can go from start one, two, three, four, five. And the way that that is going to work is it's going to read my frames from top uh, top left to bottom right. It's going to go here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So however those are arranged, it's going to follow that pattern. And that's how it's going to work when it is presenting. Oh, here we go. Cool. The deck popped up. Normally it shouldn't take as long, but I do think that there's a little bit of a network disruption on my part over here. So here I can see that slide deck. And now when I'm pressing the right key, the right arrow key, I'm able to navigate left and right. And I can see this just as I would any other presentation. So here, so I, I see a question there already. I'm just going to answer it right now. So the difference between Figma and Fig Jam, Figma is like a design tool editor. Fig Jam is going to be more of like a whiteboard collaborative uh, space to leave stickies and notes. So right now I'm currently in Figma. So let's take a look at this again. Um, so I'm going to show you, once again, navigating those frames. And you might be asking yourselves, what is a frame? I might have gotten ahead of myself there. So a frame, if I look in the top left here, uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of region tools. There's a frame and there's a section. Those are the important ones. When you press the F key and you draw a frame, it's basically a container for your content, for your text and your images and your designs that you're going to be creating here in Figma. Now, the way that the presentation works, works is that every slide is essentially a frame. Now, when you create a frame on the canvas, 
it can be made to be any size. So you might be asking yourself, well, I just want it to be slide size. So if I select my frame and I come over here to the right, I can click this little drop down, and you'll see that there's a number of options. So if I was designing something like a phone layout or even like a tablet layout, I can look through here, but we also have slides. So we have a typical 16 by nine slide. So that's a little bit wider. We also have a four by three slide. It's a little bit narrower. If I change this to slide 16 by nine. And over here, I could even see its pixel dimensions. You'll see that it'll adjust it accordingly. So this is now 1920 by 1080. So if at any point that kind of gets out of size, if I need to adjust it to make sure that is correct, I can select it and then go right back over here and choose 16 by nine. And so this then can become my slide. I can name this slide. So let's say if this is my first slide, I can say first, and that's easily done just by double clicking up here and renaming that. I can then add text and images. So over here, I can add in shapes. This is the kind of like shape tool. So if I wanted to add like a little arrow, uh, if I want to add text, I can easily add that here. So hi, right? So this way I can easily move things around in my slide as it were. Now, if I want to see that slide in presentation mode, let's hit command option return. You can also hit this play button up here. Let's see if the presentation will play. There we go. I can see my slide. That was pretty instant. And what's really cool is that in this presentation mode, it's another window, but I can still make adjustments. Let's say if I make that rectangle red, and if I go over here to this other slide, it's immediately red. Um, I can also navigate to those other slides that I already have on my screen. And as I mentioned, they're going to go from top left to bottom right. So this is the first one. This is the next one. This is the next one after that. So I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard, allowing me to see those slides as are. And this is the most basic of slide prototypes that you can begin to work with. Okay, so those are some of the basics, right? I'm just going to recap really quick. Press the F key for a frame, draw a frame, select that frame. Over here in the right, when you are in design mode, what you can do is then choose your 16 by nine frame. Once you have that, you press the T key, you can add text. Hi, I am text. And I can also see that Lauren has joined in the file with me. Obviously Figma has multiplayer capabilities. And if there wasn't so many of you joining us on the live stream today, I might invite some of you into this file. I'm gonna say, hello, Lauren. And so Lauren can even go ahead and add a shape to this slot as well. So we're working together. Um, oh, can we give me view access? We'll share in a little bit. I want to make sure that, you know, everything is, is good. We were experiencing a little bit of a slowdown earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll share the file later. We'll share it as a community file. So anybody in this presentation should be able to have uh, access to it. We'll publish it and give you a link to it. And it'll be available on figma.com slash at education. All right, cool. So here, yeah, as I said, adding shapes. Lauren, if you want to change the color of that rectangle for me, uh, just so you can see the multiplayer capability of it, kind of like live as we're sitting here, we're working together on our, our slides. You know, we have this kind of like nice big open space to, to edit this and work together. All right, so over here on the left, right, I mentioned that these are pages. So that first page here, right, this is my presenting 101, you know, this is my intro page. Here, this was us navigating frames, right? We have a number of frames here, and I have another page here yet where we're going to move on to the next topic of today, uh, images, adding images in Figma. So we're also going to talk about adding video and GIFs to make those presentations a little bit more special. So here what I have is I have these slides and these slides have shapes in them. So these are just rectangles that have been added to these frames. And what I'm going to show you is, is that all images are just fills on those shapes. And I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to quickly add them. So right here, uh, you can add images with Command-Shift-K. Uh, if you're on Windows, it's Control-Shift-K. 
And the way that works, uh, when I press that keyboard shortcut, and I'll show you an easier way if you have a hard time remembering that. Once I do this, I can navigate to a folder. So I have this assets folder. I have it full of animals. I have a bunch of images here. Let's grab some of those. I'm going to select them. And once I do this, you'll see up here, click or drag to place place all, discard all. And if you look at my cursor, there's like a little image of the cursor with a preview of one of the five images that I currently have. So now I can just click on that shape and quickly add those images. If I want to move over here, I can just kind of navigate over and I can continue adding those images. So you can also just drag an image directly into Figma. That will also work. So if I was to have a folder, let me pull up my folder here. Let's say I go into my documents folder. Let me pull up my assets folder. And so I have my animals folder. So here's my, all of my images. If I want to, I can drag it right onto the stage. Let's see if that works. There we go. So I can drop the image right onto the, to the canvas here. Um, so how to open window to choose image hit. If you're on windows, control shift K or command shift K. And I'll show you one more shortcut. Um, so once you have that image on the stage, the one thing that I want to impart is that, like I mentioned before, images are just fills on shapes. So if I was to draw, like, let's say a star shape here, I can copy the fill of this image just with command C or control C and paste it onto this star, right? And I can kind of change up how that works. So likewise, let's say if you can't remember this shortcut, command shift K, you can also do, and because we have a large international audience, I'm going to show you the, the international keyboard shortcut, command P uh, will bring up this little search bar. It's also command forward slash. So let's just, uh, let's just add this here. I'm going to add another little frame. Let's add this new shortcut. So let me, let me delete this. We're going to say command or control if you're on windows P right. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring up the quick actions menu, quick actions. So when I hit command P, I can type in place image. And this way I don't need to remember the shortcut. All I have to do is remember Command-P. And there's a lot of shortcuts that you can use with Command-P. So I'm going to hit Command-P. I'm going to type in place image. I'm going to grab an image from my desktop. There we go. So I have this dog. And then I can go ahead and place it there. And as I mentioned before, if I have another shape, let's say I have an ellipse. And I want to place the image into the ellipse. I'm going to hit Command-P. And let's do place image. And I'm going to grab another image and I'm going to place it right into that shape, that circle shape. And as a, a shape, it's still going to retain all of its shape properties. So circles have this really cool ability to uh, basically act as a pie chart when you choose the arc tool. And the image will, will map to that just like that. And it's important to kind of like learn how Figma uses images. So then this way you can become more comfortable using them. So if you also, oh, you missed that. I'll show you that one more time. I press the O key. I draw a circle. I'm going to hit command P. I'm going to place image. I'm going to grab that image. I placed it onto the circle. And the circle itself has this little dot. And, and you can use that, that arc tool. So any circle, you open it up, you click on that dot and you got this arc tool and you can open it out. And all of those properties are over here on the right. So, you know, if I wanted like little, little red circle, there you go. Cool. So um, as I mentioned, let's say if we are, we have another slide. So I'm going to duplicate this slide. I'm going to hold down the option key, the alt key if you're on Windows. I'm going to make a copy. So I have a copy of it here. I'm going to delete its contents. So I'm just going to select everything that's in that slide, and I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to add an animated GIF to this. So here I have this folder. I have my, my animals folder, but I also have a GIFs folder. So these GIFs I, I, I grabbed off of the internet. Um, so here I can place this GIF. You won't see the GIF 
play in the editor, right? So these GIFs I'm adding here, let's, let's add one more. I have a bunch of little, little dancing GIFs. And if I click on this slide and hit play, the play button, um, you will see the GIF here. So the GIFs will play. So if you have an animated GIF that you want to add to your presentation, so I can go uh, uh, there and I can see them playing. So the GIF won't play in the editor mode, but it will play uh, in that mode. Yep. Cool. Uh, let me just remove. I have a, a starting point. I'm going to delete that starting point. So here, these will play so long as there's no other prototype interactions. So if you do add a prototype interaction, it's going to break the uh, active uh, uh presentation, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. So that's just what I encountered just now. So I created a click interaction, but it will only allow me to interact with those frames. So if I were to hit play when I'm in prototype mode, I can play that slide and this slide, but that that's about it. So if I want to fix this, um, I can remove all interactions. And now when I hit play, It'll allow me to play the uh, presentation. Oops, I have some extra frames in there. There we go. I can play my presentation as, as needed. So yeah, so I saw a question about adjusting the image. So here I have an image and let's say I want to adjust how it's gonna be cropped. So let's say I want to change it. At any point, I can go to the design panel and in the design panel, go to the image fill and that will bring up this menu. This menu will give you control over the image. I can adjust its like contrast, exposure and such. However, the important thing that I want to do is change how it's filling that space. So right now, the image will do anything and everything to fit that space. Right. So as I expand it and contract it, the image is filling. So if I click this and I change this to fit right now, what the image is going to do is going to do its best, ignoring the full square, just trying to fit into it as much as it can, as we can. So if instead I choose crop, when it's cropped, I can change how the image is cropped in there. If I hold down shift the top left corner, I can change that. So there's another way to do this. And somebody already mentioned it in the chat. They said, can we edit the image by double clicking on it? So when you double click on the image, you get this ability to change how it's cropped. If at any point you want to reset it, let's say, you know, something has gone terribly wrong, right? So by terribly wrong, you know, like I, I squashed this doggy, right? I don't want to squash the doggy. So what I can do is I can go back here to this image and I can change it back to fill. So once it's fill, it's kind of normalized again. And now that it's normalized, if I double click on it, right, I can see that these fill options are available. Now, if I want to change it to crop, if I'm on a Mac, I'm going to hold on the option key. If you're on Windows, hold on the alt key and double click. And that will automatically change it to crop mode. So there we go. So I can now make this larger and smaller. So if you are looking to just kind of quickly add images, let's say if you don't have images already. So let's say here, I'm going to drop in a few shapes. So one, two, three. So let's say I have these shapes here and I want to add some. I'm going to go up here or you can hit shift I. Shift I will bring up the inserts menu. If I go over to plugins, and there is a great plugin called Unsplash. When I run that, this will use photos uploaded to the Unsplash community um, and allow me to use them in my Figma layouts. So let's say I'm looking for, you know, like a whiteboard. I can type in, there we go. And I got some images that I can now use for this presentation. I can select the shape that I want to place it into. And then I can press, uh, just click on it right there and it'll load in. And once again, you know, this is now in here. So I can click on the second shape here and I can get an image that I want to place there. And once again, let's, let's rely on our, our newfound shortcuts. I'm going to hold down the option key or command key. Um, 
option key or alt key on Windows. I'm going to double click and then now I can crop that. So let's add one more. I'm going to click up here, the inserts menu, I'm going to click on that unsplash plugin. Let's get that unsplash plugin running and uh, let's type in art. And now I can click and then we have that in there. And once again, if I want to change how that is placed, option, double click, and I can crop it a little bit differently. And there we go. Once again, if I want to change how this is spaced, someone's asking, ooh, great question, Claudia. If you want to space images out evenly, select the images, and you'll see this little icon down here in the bottom right. If you click on it, it's going to space them out evenly, and you can actually see the spacing in between them. So now I can drag this wider and shorter. So this right here, if you have a number of like shapes, right? Like let's say, you know, let's say these rectangles, right? Let's say they're no longer in order. You know, I'm like, oh no, this is not the way that I want them to be. I can select them all and I can put them over here, right? There's more options. So I can tidy them up, right? I can see that they have been tidied. Or if I want to, I can distribute the horizontal spacing and I can align them to the bottom. And you'll see that once they're they're all selected in this way, there's these little dots and these like little uh, 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 dividers, and that's gonna allow you to change that spacing. And if I want to, so I could type in that value over here and I can say 48. And if I want to, I can select them all. Let's say I want to align them in this slide, somebody said I can group them. I'm going to show you a really cool shortcut that you don't have to group them. So let's say once again, I have these images and I want them centered in my slide. I can select them all. I can hold down the alt key or option key. And when I do that over here in the top right, you'll see a line as a group. So now I don't have to group them. I can align them as a group and have them perfectly placed into my slide. I'll show you that one more time. So let's say I have a few of these images, right? Let's, here we go. I'm going to align them first together. So here they are, they're arranged. And, and let's say they're, they're not quite in that frame. So here we go. They're all selected. I'm going to hold down the option key. I'm going to click up here, align horizontally as a group and align vertically as a group. Now, this option will give me the ability to, to take any uh, uh, set of objects within a frame and align them to the frame without requiring myself to create them as a group. Uh, so option on Mac and it's alt on Windows. So select this. Hold on the option key when you're over the alignment tools, and then you can you can do that there. So I can align it to the top, to, to the bottom, and there we go. So that should save you a lot of time. All right, so we've covered adding those, those images, right? We've covered the frames. You know now to make a frame. You know now to draw a shape. You can add an image to that shape. Let's talk about video. So let's say... Uh, I'm actually going to just remove this for now. We're not going to worry about that one. I'm going to create a brand new frame. I'm going to draw the frame. I'm going to make it a 16 by 9. And I'm going to draw a couple shapes. So I'm going to make a little rectangle in there. The rectangle is the R key. I'm going to press the O key to draw a circle. And then over here, I'm going to create a polygon. And what we're going to do is we're going to add videos to all three of these shapes. So here... I'm going to click on this shape and I'm going to go over once again to the fill. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, and then I can go down here and you'll see under the fill, right? Uh, so if you change a color, you can have a color fill, right? If you click on image, you can choose an image. You can have an image fill. And then here I can change that instead to video and have a video fill. So when I choose video, just so you all know, video will only work on a uh, education team, a pro team, an organization team. It won't work if you only have a starter plan and it won't work if you're in your drafts. So this file right here is inside of a education team. I'll show you that in just a moment. There we go. I just added a video to this. Let me show you.
Um, I'm just going to hop back. And just so you can see, so this right here, I have my Figma workshops education team. And in here is my presenting file. So as long as that file is there, then this video will play. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you other ways to add video. So if I close this out and, and go back, let's say I go to my, my documents, I go to my assets folder and I go to video. I have all of these. I downloaded these from Pexels. So Pexels has a bunch of free video. The video has to be smaller than 30 megabytes. So let's say I have a, a video of this old doggy here. And when I bring this in, once again, this is nothing more than a shape with a fill. So I can copy that fill. I'm going to select it over here, copy it, and I can paste it right onto that shape. Another thing that I can do, I can right click and I can copy properties. So this is another way to do it. And I can paste those properties. So when I play this frame, So when I play this frame, you can see that those videos are now playing. So pexels.com is where I got the videos from. So P-E-X-E-L-S. So you can make your own videos as long as they are an MP4. So here, let's grab, a, let's grab another one. I got another little, little doggy here. Uh, I can copy that fill and I can paste it onto any shape. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of is that you wanna be careful not to have too many videos filling on those layers. So right now, this is trying to play two videos on the shape. So I'm gonna remove the one that's behind it. So there we go. So now I just have just that doggy on that frame. I'm gonna select that frame, I'm gonna hit play. And let's see, here we go. And uh, I'm gonna press the Z key. So the Z key changes the zoom level when you're in your presentation mode. So I'm able to go right, right, there it is. I do want to let everybody know that this is recorded. You will be seeing a recording. It'll be sent to you as long as you, you registered for today's event. The recording will come in about a week or so. Okay, cool. So the Z key or Z key uh, allows you to change that spacing, right? The zoom level. Cool. And, and just so you know, it will be looking for every frame that you have on here. So this here's a frame. This here's a frame. These are frames up here as well. So just be mindful of that when you're crafting your presentation. So uh, I know somebody was talking about alignment. I do want to take the opportunity. Uh, Figma has an excellent gridding tool. So this is for those who may be a little bit more in touch with their graphic design sides and sensibilities. Um, you can create grids uh, in Figma. So when I share out this file, you can have this. Um, I, I share out a number of different arrangements of grids. And what's cool is that Figma allows you to set up rows and columns. You can layer them on top of one another to create a very specific grid that will allow you to work. So here, this is an example of a presentation grid that I have. So right here, this is a 12 column grid. I'm gonna walk you through how I build these. I'm, I'm kind of very specific about the way that I make my grids. So I'm gonna click on this. Once again, this is a 1920 by 1080 frame. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to layout grid. I'm gonna create one. By default, it's creating an eight pixel grid that is both horizontal and vertical. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change this from grid, and first I'm gonna work on my columns so I can set my columns. So over here, I have a number of settings where I'm setting the count, the type, the width. I'm gonna show you how to create a very simple 12 column grid. So clicking over here back onto that grid, I can change that count to 12 and I can change the type. So stretch grids are really good for responsive. Um, however, this is going to be kind of like a fixed width. So I'm going to set that to the sensor and I'm going to set the width myself. Currently, this is set at eight pixels. And what I want to do is I want to nudge this up by values of eight. So when I press shift up, it's going to go by values of eight. I can set that nudge value by hitting 
Command P and typing in nudge. And I could change my big nudge. So my big nudge is set to eight pixels right now. I can set that to whatever I want it to be. And what that means is when I'm adding the width of my columns and pressing shift up, it's going up by values of eight. So I'm going here to create a 112 width, 112 width uh, size for my, my columns. And I'm also going to set my gutter right here. The gutter is going to be the spacing in between your columns. So here I'm going to set that gutter to 32. So here I have a margin on the left and the right, and I have 12 columns and they are set to values divisible by eight. So next, if I want to create rows, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click right here. I'm gonna set those rows. And over here in this 12 column layout that I have, I'm using six rows. So 12 columns and six rows. So here I can set my row count to six. I can set it to the center and I can have have those match up. So I get nice, perfect squares in between, and I'm going to match my gutter. So right now, my gutter going horizontally and vertically is exactly the same. So this is an example that I use. I actually have an entire other example where I have a 14 uh, column set. Uh, so if you go to figma.com slash at Miggy, uh, this is a community page where I have uh, making a grid system for presentations. So this is another template that I use that is a different setup. So depending on the type of content that I'm going to be using, here we go, the, depending on the type of content that I'm going to be using um, in my presentation, I might set up a different grid. Um, this one is just a fairly common one where I'm setting it up in such a way where I get these squares. Cool. So um, now I have this set up. And if I want to, you know, add type, um, I can align that with the baseline, you know, to my grid. So when you think about dividing up space, Shift G, right, will let me see how this is being applied. So Shift G will turn on and off my grid view. So up over here, if I don't want to see my grid, there it is. If I want to see it, I press Shift G. Now, if I want to have, um, let's say I create another frame that is a slide 16 by 9, I can either copy these or I can make this into a style. So I can click the four dots up here and I can create a new grid style. I'm going to call this the Miggy, you know, 12 column grid, right? And I can create that style. And now when I click on this frame, I can go click on those four dots again and apply that grid. So now I have my grid in one single place that I can apply pretty much anywhere. So this here too just kind of shows how that's arranged. And, and also with having your grid in this way, when I press the R key, right? Let's say I'm going to align that. If I want, let me make this a little bit darker so you all can see this better. I'm gonna change my, my grid to be a little bit darker. Let's say I make it blue and I darken it up a bit. So you can see the horizontal and the vertical. So there you go. So now I can draw my rectangles. And I can arrange them. And I can choose how things get placed. So let's say if I wanted, you know, this to occupy this space. And this space. Right. So I'm kind of constructing that. So when I press shift G, I can see how this is aligned um, and I can use that same grid once again, you know, again and again. Um, here, let's say I create this frame here. Hit shift G will bring up the, the gridding tool and uh, I can draw in, you know, let's say if I want to have some text on the left. And this on the right. There we go, it snaps in. Uh, I wanna place an image there, Command P, and uh, let's go place image. Let's grab uh, one of the images. I'm in video. Let me go back to my assets. Oh, assets, 
animals. And uh, let's place that animal there. And over here, I, I have an example of, of how I've created text um, that aligns, you know, perfectly to this grid with the type size and the line height. So then this way, you can get a, a perfect vertical rhythm. So I have this text here. I can also make this into a style. So right here, I have enter 136 height. Uh, I'm sorry, text and 144 line height. I can create that as a new text style and I can say H1 uh, for presentation. And now that I have that style created, you know, if I bring this text over to my, my slide here, you know, let's say I just want to do title, um, I could change it to that style, right? So I can select that text and I can change it to that style. So then this way I can have consistency. So the shapes won't auto align to the grid, but they will snap to the grid. So just like the text will snap to the grid, the baseline of the text will snap, the uh, uh, images will also snap. So you can change your snap settings by hitting Command P and then type in snap, and you can change snap to objects, snap to geometry, and snap to pixel grid. So these are things that you can go ahead and do. So I don't know what you mean by automatic present grid, but um, so sometimes I will use auto layout and sometimes I will use uh, text. So would I tell you about how to adjust spacing in the text? Sure. So when I create text right now, um, what I do is I adjust, let me break this. So this is the line height. So the, the way the line height works, there's like a little bit of spacing on the top, a little bit on the bottom. In order for this line height to kind of match up with um, the spacing, I make sure that it's also divisible by four. So I can decrease this or I can increase this. So as long as it's divisible by four, it will um, be snapping to like an underlying baseline grid. So if I was to go to my frame up here, uh, let me break the grid. Uh, I'm gonna add in a rows. I'm gonna set the count to auto. I'm gonna set the type to top and I'm gonna set the height to four. So, um, and the gutter to zero. And you're gonna see this very small grid show up. Um, I can make this a little bit better for viewing through the live stream, where if I set this set right here, this is what's referred to as a baseline grid. If you've seen other applications like Adobe InDesign, you can set these natively within the application. This baseline grid is in alignment with the larger grid. So like you can see that these line up very, very well. And that baseline grid will also be in alignment as long as your type is, your line height is divisible by four. So if I set that to 144, you will see that, that as long as one baseline matches up, they all will, but you will need to adjust that first baseline. One thing that you do want to do, um, so here right now my text is set to fixed size. Usually you want to set your text to auto height. So then this way the size of your text box will grow with the text. Uh, this is also another point I, I would like to call out that Figma now has spell check. So if I right click on this text, uh, I could actually change the language uh, that is being detected. So you can see that uh, we have a number of languages available for the spell check preferences. You could also add items to the, the dictionary as well. So Figma now has spell check. So another great reason that you can now start making your presentations in Figma. Okay, so we're um, in the last bit. What I wanna do is I wanna go a little above and beyond and I wanna show you uh, how to, um, so does Figma have a repeat grid feature on elements? So Figma does not uh, currently have a repeat grid. We have um, auto layout. Uh, so with auto layout, if I wanted to, you know, have additional elements. Um, so let's say if I had like, you know, 
Sorry, I'm like answering questions and demoing at the same time. But here, I'll just show you. So like, let's say if I had a bunch of these and I press shift A, right now they're in auto layout. So if I want additional elements, I could just hit command D and they're also now as part of that layout. So if I make this layout go down, right? And uh, let's change that. Let's just hide that image. And I want a duplicate of it. I could hit command D and there it is. If I want to change the spacing of this or even just reduce it, uh, this is going to be auto layout. Um, so we don't have repeat grid, but you know, I believe that there's a bit of parity using auto layout. All right, cool. So next, what I want to show y'all when you're presenting in Figma um, is that you can have kind of like interactive content within your slides. So here I'm going to select this slide. I'm going to hit play. And remember too, you can hit command option return or control alt enter uh, on, on Windows um, and then hit pre presentation mode. So here on this slide, I have scrolling content. Right. Um, and what's cool about this is that you can present information um, a little bit more dynamically this way. So if I was to create a, a new frame, once again, let's make our uh, 19, uh, let's create our 19 by 20, uh, about 1080 frame. And let's say I have this frame here. So, uh, you know, a bunch of images, let's make a brand new one. So let's see, I'm going to press R. So that just draws a rectangle. Let's create a, a few boxes. Um, let's align them. Let's just say they're about 48 height. Let's add some images. So command P, place image. These are all things that I've been, you know, demonstrating throughout the demo. I'm going to add one, two, three. There we go. So let's say we want to make it so we can scroll these up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just make this a frame, but I like to have this as a component. So then this way I can have my own copy outside of my slide that I can then edit for the in-slide version. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to create this as a component. So up here, you'll see components. A component is kind of like a reusable element, right? It's like a, a definition of content in a frame that can be used in multiple places. So here I'm going to create this component and I'm going to call this, you know, um, vertical animals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the command key, right? Or control key on windows. And I'm going to drag this up. So this frame, I'm changing the scope of the frame. So here, I'll show you that a little bit bigger. So I'm changing the scope of this frame. So I created this component. It's this component frame. It has all three of those images. I'm going to hold on the command key and just scope it down to one of them. I'm going to come over here to the right and I'm going to clip that content, right? So I can clip it. I'm going to unclip it for now. But this is the, the main component. Um, and then over here, I'm going to click on prototype mode. So in prototype mode, there is this option. Let me take a little screenshot of it, right? And the screenshot basically says, I'm going to change the overflow scrolling of this. So I'm going to change this to vertical scrolling. So now I can copy and paste that into this frame. And here is where I'm going to clip it. So this right here is a copy of this uh, whole component. And then also with this component, right, that I have right here, this also has the vertical scrolling applied. So now when I play this frame, right, so I'm clicking on this frame, I'm playing on this frame, I can now apply that, that scroll that we see there. So like, let's say I'm making a presentation, right, and I'm talking about this, and I come over here, and I can drag that up and, and down, and I have a little bit of scrollable content. So I could even take this and change some of its properties. Let's say I want to put a stroke around it. And let's say I want to round those corners up a little bit. And I'm going to put that stroke on the, on the center, right? So now when I come to this slide in my presentation, I can now, you know, scroll things on that slide. And just to uh, uh, recap, right, let's say we get an image. We're like, oh, I want to recrop that image. I'm going to uh, option double click in. Thanks, Lauren. 
And I'm going to drag that down. So there we go. So now, once again, if I want to recrop, option double click, and uh, let's let's recrop, right? And because I'm changing this in this, this is like on the side, right? This isn't going to be viewed by anybody, but this is like my working area. So any changes that I make um, to this, right? So let's say I want to recrop this dog, right? It's also changing in that instance above. Right. And all that is is just a copy of this. So that then becomes an instance. So all of the changes that I'm making here are now being reflected. They're now being reflected uh, in this scroller. So likewise, if, if you wanted to make something that's like horizontally scrolling, uh, you could do that as well. Um, so let's say these, these vertical animals. Let me go right a little bit. One, two, three. So I have three things to the right. Let's let's populate it. Uh, let's make it with videos this time. So let's drop in some video. Um, oh, actually, I can't pull up the video that way. I do have to go through the fill. So I'm going to go video. Let's grab in one of those videos. Let's go to my assets, videos. Huh, it's weird why it won't let me pick it through there. Oh, because I'm still on image. Choose video. Image, video. Huh, why won't it let me choose the video? That's weird. Let me grab one from my right there. There we go. So I have the fill and I can paste it. And let me grab another video. Just drag it in. I'm going to copy the fill, right? Just click to the left of it, copy and paste. And then let's grab one more video. Uh, let's find an animal video. There we go. It's a cute little, little cat. Copy and paste. So I have these three and I want to make them a little scroller. I'm going to select them. I'm going to make them a component. I'm going to hold down the command key, control key if you're on Windows. Drag this over. Oops. I'm going to drag this over right there. And uh, then here, I'm going to go to prototype mode and set that to horizontal scrolling. So this I can now scroll horizontally. So I can actually add both of these onto that same frame. I can copy it. I can paste it. In my design mode, I can clip it. I can even round out those corners. Let me throw in a little stroke. There we go. So now when I am, uh, when, I hit, when I hit play, here we go. And now I got my little scroller full of videos. Cool. And and even one cool thing that you could do with the video, I, I, I forgot to mention this, but if I go to my prototype mode, um, I can actually create an interaction on my video. I can set it so when I click, uh, the video will play pause, right? So let's say you want that video to, to play pause during a presentation, right? Um, so if I click on this video, interactions, click play pause video, right? Right here, click on this, interactions, on click, play pause video. So now that that is set, on the uh, kind of component definition over here, right? So I have these two components that I made. Um, it also will be reflected in the instance of it that is in my presentation frame. So now when I click, check it out, it pauses the puppy. So I can move this over, it's playing the video. I click, it pauses it here, click, pauses it. So if you wanna have a video and the video will actually play audio as well, I don't have my audio sharing, but you can pause it in the middle of the video if it's interrupting you. Um, so then this way you can have those, those scrollers in the slides of your presentation. All right, so we have one last concept I'm going to cover. Uh, this is interactive components um, in Figma. I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, once again, this file will have video links to many of these concepts that I'm covering today. So if I'm talking about interactive components, I'm adding in a little video in the file that you can watch to learn about that concept as well. So that's going to be the same um, here in, uh, uh, let's see, I believe, adding images and video. Right, We have a placing images video uh, that is by myself about placing those images. And we also have a link to a uh, community file, community template that explains video and prototypes a little bit deeper.
So we have one last concept here. We're going to talk about interactive content. So let's say if you want to create a little baby prototype inside of your presentation. So let's walk through an example really quick. I'm going to select this frame. I'm going to hit play. So I'm going to press Z just to zoom that properly. So when I click, right, I'm navigating through all of these. So I have a mini presentation within a single slide. Right. So I have a mini presentation within a single slide and I'm going to show you how to create one of these. It's actually really fun. So what I'm going to do, very similar to what we did before, let's create a um, let's create like the, the, the shape that we want to create. So let's say you want to just make a, a click through prototype, a very simple one of some of your designs. So I'm going to create some shapes here. Let's say one, two three, four, we're going to click through four times. Let's say I select them. I go to my design panel and we just tidy them up. So they're nice and even. There we go. So here, what I'm going to do once again, command shift K, I'm going to grab four of my images. You can drag images right on. Um, but basically remember that all images are just fills on shapes in Figma. That's how they work. So once again, if I want to crop this, I option double click, I crop it a little to the right. Option double click and I crop it a little to the left. Okay, cool. So now we want to make this a fun little click through within one of our slides. So I'm going to select all of these. Uh, and I'm going to come up here. And instead of creating one component, I am going to create a component set. So I'm going to create a component set. So this is one of the key aspects of making an interactive component. So what this is going to do is going to have its own set of interactions that are going to allow you uh, to, to kind of work on this. So we're only going to see one of these at a time, and then we're going to click on them, and then it's going to go one, two, three, four. So let's create this as a component set. Duly, you know, this is an advanced method, right? This is just something that is a little bit like hacking Figma to do this this way. So I'm going to create component set. So now this is a component set. And um, so, yes, I will share the uh, this file as a community file for all of you. So here I'm going to select this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to prototype mode. And when I'm in prototype mode, it's a little bit different than design mode. In prototype mode, there's this little plus symbol, and I'm just going to create that to the next one. And it's going to create a very simple interaction. So now I'm just going to go one to next, one to next, one to next. And then this bird, this last one, I'm going to bring it back to the beginning. So what I've just done is create a little mini self-contained prototype of interactions, where when I click on each one, it's going to go to the next one. Now, what I want to do is I want to change the transition between them. So I'm going to just select all of these arrows, holding down the shift key and selecting all of those arrows. And I'm going to change this from being instant to dissolve. So it's just going to crossfade between each one. So now that I have that, I'm going to copy this component. Let's, uh, let's move this one out of the way. And here in frame two, I'm just going to paste it in here, right? And just like our other ones, I'm going to go back to the design panel. I'm going to round out those corners. Uh, I'm going to clip the content and round out those corners. Let's throw in a little stroke. And uh, let's see how our little click prototype works. I'm going to select that frame. I'm going to hit play. So now we're in that presentation mode. I'm going to press Z. If it ever is zoomed out, just press the Z key. And so now I can click on this and it's going to crossfade between all of them. So there's a number of different ways to do various types of kind of like self-contained interactions. And what's cool about this is that this will not break your prototype. So just so y'all know, we're coming up on time. Um, I'm probably going to have this go out for about a another 10 minutes to answer uh, some questions here. So uh, we didn't have enough time to go to uh, Fig Jam per se, but the one thing that I did want to show is that if you go to figjam.new, um, you can create a brand new Fig Jam file. And let's say you had a bunch of slides, you know, like like here, I have a bunch of slides that I would like people to, to comment on and give feedback to. I can copy them right from Figma, paste them into Fig Jam, and then anybody can be in this file with me. So I can share this, this file. Um, let me copy that link. 
uh, and make sure I give Lauren edit access so Lauren can can join me here. Lauren, here's a here's a copy. Here's a link to this. Um, and so Lauren, I, I dropped that in Slack if if you want to join me. I'm coming. All right. Um, so then this way in, in Fig Jam, you can also have your slides and, and you can still edit them. So uh, navigating by using the space bar key. But the cool thing about Fig Jam is that we now have, you know, emotes, right? You can leave stickies. So for feedback, uh, you can even mark it up. So if you have like a little highlighter, you know, you can, you can, you can mark this up um, and, and, and like leave little notes uh, on the, the presentation itself. Uh, there's other ways to navigate it using widgets, but we can probably copy this during like another time. So once again, that's just copy paste it into Fig Jam and in Fig Jam, you can be collaborative and, and leave feedback. So uh, let's go through questions. Yeah, Lauren has been amazing. Thank you, Lauren. So we have a number of questions here. So I'm going to spend uh, another 10 minutes answering questions. Uh, that's the end of the, the actual live stream. But uh, if you want to hang on, uh, I'll be looking through um, some of these. So here, apart from GIF and video, can you insert audio in Figma? So you can bring audio in as video. Um, so right now you can't just drop in a audio file, but you can bring in a video uh, as audio. If you check out the video prototyping um, playground file, uh, it has examples on how to include audio into Figma. So uh, check out Figma.com slash at Figma. I'm putting it in the chat. Look for the video prototyping playground. It'll walk you through how to do that. So uh, talking about export file types. So in Figma, primarily you're going to be exporting like visual assets. So if I hit export over here, we have PNG, JPEG, SVG, that's scalable vector graphics. We also have PDF. Um, so you can export individual slides as PDFs, but if you want to export an entire slide deck, if you go up over here, and you go here, uh, export frames to PDF. What that's going to do is actually export out all of your frames into a PDF deck. So I know that that was a big wallop that I just threw on you at the last minute. I'll show you that one more time. So if you have a bunch of slides and you want them exported out as a PDF deck, you can go over here, click on the Figma menu, file, export frames to PDF. That's going to be different than just selecting an object and then exporting as a PDF over here. Export frames of PDF will export the entire PDF deck. And that was, that was a great question. Uh, so do you need an internet connection to make presentations or is there an option to export? Um, so once again, you can export the PDF. Another thing that you can do once you have Figma loaded into your computer. If you lose connection, you can still work on it. So even if it's in your browser, as long as you're you're in and you have it loaded in, you'll be able to work on it. You'll lose multiplayer, but you still will keep all the changes. Once you have internet again, it'll sync all of your changes back onto the internet. If you're ever concerned about your file version history, you can click on the uh, Figma menu and then go uh, file, show version history, and you can see all of the previous versions. It auto saves, but you can also save to version history, uh, a very specific moment in your file history, if you wish. Cool. Just so y'all know, uh, Lauren is asking in the chat, um, please leave feedback. Let us know how we did today. Um, it, it helps us out uh, with our future live streams. Okay, so as a beginner educator, where can I learn step-by-step -step tutorial Figma? Is there something like this? There's a lot of content on our YouTube channel. Um, the one thing that I always say, it's not necessarily learning Figma step-by-step, -step, but what you want to do in Figma. Um, so if you're looking to make presentations, you know, seek out content that is specific to Figma presentations. There's going to be a lot of content that might talk about design systems or be content talking about illustration. What I would do is try to find content that is specific to this. Um, if you check out our YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash uh, Figma, you will find a bunch of content surrounding this. We have an entire education channel uh, where we talk about um, specific educator content. So uh, check that out. So go to YouTube, look for the education channel, and you should find content that will be more catered and relevant for you as an educator. 
Um, so yeah, same thing, components and prototyping, check out the YouTube channel. There's tons of content. We regularly run, run uh, we regularly run live streams that are very specific to uh, prototyping and, and various concepts as well. So I would say look up the concept, not necessarily Figma itself. Uh, let's see, how are we doing? I'll answer like uh, two or three more questions. I see a question too, is there a mobile app from Figma? There is a mobile app on the uh, iPad, on Android, and uh, on the phone. Uh, it can be used to view prototypes. Um, on the, the iPad, it can be used primarily with FigJam. Um, however, it's not a full out uh, uh, design application in the mobile. So can frames be easily rearranged? Yes. So let's say here I want to organize uh, these frames or if I want to rearrange them, um, what I can do, I can actually select, I can select all of these frames and I can uh, tidy them up as a grid. And uh, let's say if I want to arrange them, uh, these little dots that kind of come up allows me to rearrange them. And if I want to swap my hello with my thank you, if I hold on the option key, I'm sorry, the command key, uh, I could just swap the thank you with the hello. So if you're if you need to move two slides, select those two slides, click the little dot in the center and move them around, right? Let's say I need to move these two. I select these two and then I can just, move the top one to the bottom one. Once you start selecting whole slides, then Figma's smart and knows that you just want the slides and not the content inside of them. So I can select these nine and begin to rearrange them uh, as needed and as I see fit. Well, I'm gonna drop a little thumbs up stamp on that. Um, so how do we add prototype features to vertical scroll items uh, below the fold? Click bottom image to go to another frame in the presentation. Um, that's something that we didn't necessarily cover today. Uh, you can add elements to navigate a presentation, um, but once you start adding too many, it can break the implicit nature of the prototype. Um, there's uh, uh, examples online. Uh, so I'll just kind of answer that with, um, this is a kind of like a it depends answer that there's ways to create very rich presentations that are very interactive. Um, I haven't covered it here because it's a little bit more advanced, but uh, the short answer is, is yes, you can. Um, and it depends on specifically what it is you're trying to accomplish. All right, and are the shortcut commands posted somewhere? This is a fantastic question. So somebody was asking about keyboard shortcut commands. If you hit command P and type in keyboard shortcuts, you'll get this amazing pane at the bottom of your window that will allow you to see all available shortcuts. So I can go through here and I can see all the shortcuts. I can even change the layout of my keyboard. So let's say I see we got some Port uh, people from Portugal here. I could change it to a Portuguese keyboard layout and then I can see how those shortcuts are then mapped for me. So here you go to layout, you could change that layout and then begin to see what shortcuts are meant specifically for you. So myself, you know, I have a US QWERTY keyboard. So then when I go back in here, I will see the keyboard shortcuts that are meant specifically for me. So depending on your, if you're on Windows or Mac, it will know and it will display the uh, according shortcuts as well. So it'll show you uh, control. Um, so that was a great question. It was actually part of my, my workshop earlier today, um, but uh, I kind of glazed over that pretty quickly. So uh, once again, uh, command or control P, uh, type in keyboard shortcuts. Uh, also, you should see a little question mark over here in the bottom right. If you haven't dismissed it, that will also lead you to the uh, keyboard shortcuts. And uh, here, this is the last question for today. Thank you all for joining. Y'all are fantastic. Let's see. Uh, does Figma now have the option to record prototype? So, so we can't record the prototypes with Figma natively. Uh, you can use any number of screen recorders. Uh, this is something that we're like kind of pushing for and exploring. Um, so uh, what I use, I use the native one on Mac, which is like command uh, option shift five, no command. Command Shift 5 on a Mac, um, that's what I use for screen recording, and I make that as, as a GIF. Uh, so yeah, so right now you can only use it using other software.
And then what's the biggest advantage of slides in Figma versus slides of PowerPoint? Multiplayer, uh, interactivity, um, freedom. Uh, you can kind of move things around as you wish. You can add in your images as you wish. Uh, other uh, software is very linear. Figma is very multimodal. Uh, and gives you a lot of freedom and, and, and applies a lot of real-time access. Yeah. Once you start using Figma for your slides and you go back to something like Google Slides, you know, you might find yourself like, like, ah, I wish I could do it the way that I, that I had in Figma. It's a different way of thinking. It's something that some people might prefer Figma. Some people might prefer Google Slides. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Yeah, Lauren has to use Figma now. All right, cool. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we will be sharing out a template of this file uh, with the recording. So then this way you can go through and